Hello and thank you so much for joining me for another video. For this video, I'm very excited to share it with you because I'm gonna walk you through, number one, what it looks like and what it means to invest with a robo-advisor, but I'm gonna specifically walk you through how to invest with RBC's new robo-advisor called RBC Invest Ease. So what that actually means is I'm gonna kind of walk you through their investor questionnaire where it kind of um, takes a bunch of information from you and then determines what your ideal asset asset mixes between you know equities and fixed income and then I'm actually going to show you what the dashboard looks like because I actually invested some of my money with them so I'm going to show you once you invest your money what it actually looks like on the inside so super excited to share this video with you so make sure to stick around so uh, first thing I do is go to the website rbcinvesties.com and if you scroll down there's this button that says get started and as you can see, it's forwarded us to uh, this web page that basically is their investor profile questionnaire. Every single um, kind of digital investing platform robo advisor has something like this uh, in it. It will basically um, ask you a series of questions in order to kind of determine um, who you are, what you want, and what is a good portfolio for you based off a number of factors, including your age, your uh, time horizon, your goals, your risk tolerance, all that kind of stuff. So this is a pretty common common. So uh, let's go through it and let's see uh, whether it uh, kind of spits out the portfolio that I kind of perceive that I should probably get. I'm already investing myself, so I kind of know um, what portfolio is right for me. So let's see if uh, it also has the same kind of answer. So uh, first things first, what would you like to invest for? I am 32 and I want to invest for my retirement. Which statement best describes your investing knowledge? It's okay if you're completely new to investing. We want to better understand your investing knowledge and experience so we can recommend the right portfolio for you. So I have no or limited knowledge of investing the uh, and the financial markets. Uh, I've been investing for a few years and have a basic understanding of investments. I have been investing for some time and have a solid understanding of investing and the associated risks. I'm an expert investor with either a professional accreditation or professional experience. I'm going to say this because I am not a CFA or CIM. All right, which statement best describes your investing experience? I am a new or inexperienced investor. Uh, I own some investments, but I'm not sure what they are. That's probably most common. Um, I manage my investments and own stocks, mutual funds, options in a personal investment account. My investments are professionally managed by financial advisor. This is the one that I'm currently doing. So I'm going to click next. Which statement best describes how you fund your existing investment accounts? Um, I'm a new investor and or don't have any investment accounts. I have an investment account and I only make lump sum contributions. I contribute a fixed amount to my portfolio on a regular basis, like weekly, monthly, quarterly. That is me. That's what I do. Tell us about your plans for this investment. The minimum amount you need to start investing with RBC Investees is $1,000. That's actually pretty normal for most uh, robo-advisors, just so you know. There are a few that I think have maybe lower limits, but this is uh, pretty typical. This uh, minimum investment will help us develop a diversified portfolio for you. So I plan to deposit $1,000 to start and I'd like to retire at age, yeah, let's say 65. Um, and, and it gives a little thing here. What's it say? Market volatility over the short term can be unpredictable. True fact. Um, we suggest long-term investors establish a time horizon of at least seven years to help smooth out these fluctuations. Also agree with that. How would you like to invest on an ongoing basis? Consider your current financial situation and what you can contribute on a regular basis. If your plans change, you can adjust the amount and frequency at any point. So I plan on making uh, monthly contributions of whatever amount to my RBC Investees account. I actually do bi-weekly um, just because I like it. I, I think I started doing it back when I was um, in my early 20s and I just kind of kept that habit and I like it and I don't even notice it because it's so frequent and also my mortgage comes out bi-weekly so it's I don't know I'm just used to it uh contributions to do, do um let's say two hundred dollars and right here it says the odds of re uh, reaching your investment goal improve significantly with a regular savings plan start with an amount you can afford knowing it can be changed at any time all right, next we've got this $1,000 initial deposit represents approximately what portion of your total savings and investments? Uh, we know it's a personal question, but it will help us better assess your risk tolerance. About a quarter or less, about half, most of it, all of it. Uh, way less. 
Um, so I'm going to say that that's what it represents. And a little tip here, total savings investments include all the money you have in cash, GICs, savings bonds, mutual funds, stocks, and bonds, but exclude real estate and mortgage debt. All right, next we've got how much investment risk are you comfortable with? Based on your goal for this investment account, choose a risk level below. The graph will show you how potential value fluctuation could affect your investment over a year. Okay, so let's start with what very low risk means. So what that means is... Um, are you are you comfortable with taking risks? Are you or are you very risk averse? If you're like, no, I'm terrified of losing any amount of money by investing, um, then you would have a very low risk tolerance. Though, kind of just the rule of thumb is if you are younger, if you have a longer time horizon, if you plan on investing for uh, decades to come, you can afford to take on more risk because you have that much longer to kind of uh, ride that wave of those ups and downs. But still, you need to be really cognizant of like how much risk you are really comfortable with. You don't want to, you know, lose sleep over your investments, basically. So low risk, this is what it kind of looks like. Initially, you deposit $1,000 into your uh, RBC Investees investment account. And in a favorable market, you could potentially make $1,104. Um, but if the market kind of takes the dip, you could lose a little bit of money and uh, maybe your initial investment will drop to $963. But <laughs> on the other side of things, if you invest in things that are considered a little bit more high risk uh, with your uh, initial deposit in a favorable market, if things are going well, you could potentially grow that amount uh, after one year um, to uh, $1,289. Or if things kind of don't go so well in the markets, you could uh, potentially lose a little money um, and your de deposit, your initial deposit will only go, will, will basically decrease to 875 Let's move on. Oh, it says something here. Um, higher risk is associated with the potential for higher returns, future returns. That's what I was kind of trying to explain. Uh, although most investments have some fluctuations over time. 100%. All right, next here we've got, which is your preferred investment approach? We want to better understand your investment objective for this account and how much risk you're willing to take on. So uh, preservation of investment. I'm not willing to accept any loss of my initial investment growth. I will accept higher volatility and the potential for significant losses. Stability. I prioritize, prioritize steady returns over the long term. Hmm, I'm going to say growth because I'm still young. I'm still a younger investor and I can um, accept kind of some volatility for that reward because I have a very um, long time horizon. All right. What would you do if the market took a downturn, which it will at some point? It is normal. It is not something to fear. It's just it's just how it goes. That is just natural. It, it happens. So uh, we want to better understand your risk tolerance. Recall historical periods of steep market declines, i.e. the Great Recession of 2008 or the dot-com bubble of 2000. So how would you have managed your investments during these periods? I would withdraw my funds until the market stabilized. I would take no action. I avoid following markets too closely. I would transfer in cash to buy more investments. So honestly, I'm probably this person. Uh, and I, I think I would just kind of, yeah, <laughs> keep calm, carry on and not touch it. Oh, we're at step 11. We only got one more question to answer. Uh, lastly, tell us about your employment. We know it's a personal one, but it will help us understand your current financial situation and determine the right portfolio for you. So I'm currently earnest, earnest salary commission income entrepreneur, and my annual income is what I'm going to put in. Okay. So let's see what my portfolio recommendation is. Okay, this isn't a surprise. Growth, definitely. Um, based on your answers, we recommend a growth portfolio. Here's why. It focuses on generating high returns, higher returns, and works well with your longer investment period and your preference for above average risk investments. So what's this say? Once you open your account, we'll contact you to confirm your investment plan. We'll also stay in touch to make sure that this portfolio continues to work for you in uh, if your needs change. So this is actually great. Uh, again, this is also very uh, common with, uh, I think, all robo-advisors in Canada. Even though they kind of spit out, um, this is kind of what portfolio we suggest for you. They always have you also talk to a professional over the phone to verify, to confirm that. Because you may have, you know, answered some questions and maybe you didn't understand or maybe you've changed your mind or whatever the case is, they really want to make sure that they're um, helping you <laughs> invest in the portfolio that you actually want. So let's look down here. So with RBC Invest Ease, it says uh, you could have 529 thousand five hundred and seventeen 
dollars by the time you're 65 you can earn an additional $126,169 with the lower fees RBC Investees offers. Oh, so it's comparing an RBC Investees uh, compared to a traditional advisor. And let's see what this says. Uh, includes RBC Investees 0.5% annual management fee applied six months after the pilot program. Um, uh, HST and assumed 0.14 ETF management expense ratio. Again, um, pretty common. There are some cheaper ETFs out there. Um, but in terms of um, a robo-advisor management fee, 0.5% is pretty much the standard you'll find with any other robo-advisor you'll find out there. So this is a uh, pretty, yeah, this is pretty common. And here it says uh, average traditional all in advisor fees are about 2%. Sometimes it can even be more at 2.5%. Um, so in general, using a robo advisor like RBC Investees will save you a ton of money in fees. And that's money in your pocket, like $100,000. That's a big difference. And I think uh, well, that's why it's so important to really be aware of what fees you're paying. So it got to that uh, total number of over $500,000 because I'm starting with $1,000, making biweekly contributions of $200. Um, I'm 32 and uh, this will be up until I'm 65. And it says my projected average annual rate of return is 6.57%. Okay, so we have this information that is helpful. Aha, this is what I was kind of uh, looking for. So currently my own investment portfolio, I am investing 70% um, equities and 30% in fixed income. So that is right on the money. So this, uh, the questionnaire and me answering those questions, right on the money, very accurate. And to view details, so it gets a little specific here. So when it comes to fixed income and cash, it's really 28% uh, in fixed income, then 2% cash. That's fine. Um, and equities, so those stocks, um, we've got 24% uh, in Canadian equity, 24% in U.S. equity, um, international equity is at 14.5%, and then emerging market equity at 7.5%. All right. Sounds good to me. And let's look at specifics here. What are they investing me in? So as you can see, obviously, they are just RBC ETFs. And okay, last but not least, cut to a few weeks later, um, after I pushed that button, um, it prompted me to fill in a bunch of my personal information and also schedule an appointment uh, just over the phone with one of their um, investment professionals. And that's what I did. I had a chat with them, asked them a lot of questions, um, and also just verified if the portfolio did fit um, kind of my goals and uh, my risk tolerance and uh, all that kind of stuff. And in the end, yes, I was happy with it. And so uh, they were super helpful on the phone. And um, then once, that was all done. Then I got um, kind of a sequence of emails um, telling me when, you know, the money that I moved from one institution to um, my RBC Investees account has been moved in there. And then my investments were bought. And uh, and then they gave me um, access to my dashboard. And this is what the dashboard looks like. So if you invest with RBC Investees, this is what you can expect to see. So not a heck of a lot at the minute, just because um, it has not been a full month since I invested with them. So they don't have any kind of information yet. But as you can see uh, over here, my goal for this account is retirement. Um, let's see what this view details thing looks like. Oh yeah, so this is kind of the information that I um, inputted in that questionnaire. Um, my first, uh, my initial contribution was $1,000. It is only worth $993.25 at the minute because uh, the markets kind of went down, I suppose. Some of my investments um, changed in value, dropped in value. And so that is that is it. That is how it is. Um, and then also just some of that uh, initial information. So I, I plan to retire at age 65. I plan to also make biweekly contributions of $200. And my portfolio is the growth po portfolio that we kind of went through. And here's a nice little kind of guide too. So it's like a starting today, uh, you know, my investments are worth $993. Um, but by the time I reach um, 65 in 2051, um, everything will, you know, hopefully uh, be worth about, you know, over $500,000. Again, that's just an estimation. We'll, you know, we'll see how it goes. We'll see me at 65. This uh, portfolio information. Um, and also, this is actually really interesting because this really gives you a breakdown of um, the uh, specific ETFs you're invested in and their performance, their gain and losses and all that kind of stuff. And this is where it shows my transactions. So as you can see, there are some transactions that have taken place. Um, first, you know, $1,000 in cash was put into the account. And then subsequently, um, that cash was um, divvied up so we could buy these different ETFs. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that walkthrough. Uh, if you still have some questions, um, and I'm sure you do, uh, first, of course, just reach out to RBC Investees. They have a great customer service. I talked to one on the phone, um, and they're super, super helpful. Um, but also just leave your question in the comments and I can see if I can help you myself. Maybe I have the answer you're looking for. Um, and thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. I have a lot more exciting videos in the queue and I don't want you to miss any. So thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.